So you have seen the video, maybe, how to operate a rollback tow truck. That was with my older 1995 Ford F800. We've upgraded. And uh, now we're gonna show you how to load and unload a car that is either immobilized or does still run and drive onto said tow truck. So without further ado, we're going to back up to that car as that is step one. So let's, let's go, let's do it, let's do the thing. So I will feature a clip of truck driver point of view. and what I do when I am backing up. So I'll give you my, my personal view. You know, um, when I started out, my biggest question was like dead placement. Like where should I stop in front of the car I wanna tow? So pretty much just uh, really wing it. I go until I'm like just about at the emblem of most vehicles or, you know, on smaller cars right over the hood you know, as it touches the hood right over the bumper, stuff like that. So obviously, park, parking brake is set. This has air brakes. Now this truck is, you know, air ride, air brakes. We will engage the PTO, dump the air. Air needs to be dumped before the bed can operate. And uh, we, we don't need to idle it up. So now we will go back outside and uh, go from there. So airbags are dumped on the rear, as you see, barely right over the tire. And at this point, you know, we are now a good distance away to drop the bed right in front of that vehicle and start, uh, start winching, winching it up. Cameraman back on scene, blowing up third gen Cummins in the background. point we're now going to drop the bed in front of the car so first first thing is first this is the rule you cannot tilt the bed before you pull the bed past the locks but we will bring the bed backwards I like to bring the bed back about two feet you can watch it on your headboard and we will now show the audience so these are your bed locks this is what uh, prevents your bed from going up and down while it is fully locked in. So you need to clear these a safe amount, and at this point now we can tilt the bed backward. Tilt it down, that is. So now we're going to tilt it down just until the bed supports to touch the ground at which we are sitting on. Now you bring the bed down the rest of the way. We'll be towing that next. Okay, so as you see, we are now set up with the bed right in front of the vehicle that we are going to tow. It's at this point where now, if the vehicle does still run and drive, whether you're towing it because it has a blown out tire, something like that, you can drive it up, park it, strap it down. Or if the vehicle is incapable of operating under its own power, you would winch it up with a winch. That is located on the tow truck. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to first simply drive the vehicle up so I can show you guys where the vehicle should be positioned and how to strap it down. So first thing is first, we're going to prepare our straps. As you see, I don't have any on my truck bed right now due to it was raining the other day. So oh, straps are located in my toolbox. My toolbox, very unorganized. So these are the straps that my truck requires. We are chained at both ends with a dog bone in the middle. Okay. So I will set up these straps. 
exactly how they would be on the truck. Just like that. Got one strap here and the other strap we will put in that corner over there. That is legal. One of these straps is technically two points of contact. You need four points of contact on a towed vehicle. This counts as two points of contact due to using the dog bone over the tire. And you're pulling from this end and this end. Highly recommend always, always using all four corners because uh, it is much easier to strap down the vehicle in all four corners, regardless how far you're going, 100 miles, 10 miles, doesn't matter easier to do that than it is to call your boss or call someone else because your car that you were towing is now over there. Not good. So we'll now drive this vehicle up and put it in a spot that will be uh, even enough distribution on the bed but also enough weight over the rear axle and enough weight where the, the front steer axle will not, you know, be too overloaded or not have enough weight on it. You don't want the car too far forward or too far back because that will cause some drivability issues. So I will now become one with the vehicle and put it on this truck. We'll now shut the vehicle off. place the key somewhere where we won't lose it. So as this is an automatic, parking brake is set and the vehicle is in park. On manual vehicles, I would I will never, never drive a manual vehicle if I'm by myself. Drive a manual vehicle onto the bed of a truck, shut it off in first gear, never. I will always winch a manual vehicle up because anything can happen as you're getting out. You can bump the shifter in neutral, parking brake doesn't hold, and now your car is over there. Not good. We want our vehicles on the bed during the entire job, and that's how it's done properly the tow bro way. Let's start strapping the car down. So you pull your strap to the dog bone and fish it onto the tire, and you want to make sure the back of the strap isn't contacting any of the brake parts, brake lines, brake hoses, and rubbing up against the control arm. And if it is not, you pull it tight and strap it down. And there she is. Pull the slack through. That's it. So we would now repeat that with the other four corners. Load the vehicle back up and drop it. But in, uh, for ease of this video, we will just use this one strap to show you. So at this point, now that the vehicle is strapped down, you would put the bed back up. And it's exactly the same, but in reverse. So we bring the bed forward. Never tilt the bed before you bring it forward. If you tilt the bed, you're putting all of this weight, the vehicle and the bed, on just the tilt cylinders, and that is how you crack the frame of the tow truck. So we're just going forwards until a majority of the weight is past the rear axle, and now it's a shared weight distribution from the entire frame, front to rear, front axle, rear axle, leaf springs, everywhere is getting an equal amount of weight. So we're about the same distance we were when we first started tilting the bed back. At this point, we're going to bring the bed up. And now that the bed is up, we're going to bring it in. We go nice and slow, bringing the bed in to make sure that it does catch on the locks. And we are locked, and we'll show you the bed sitting in the lock. That is fully past those locks. Now the bed cannot slide back unless hydraulic pressure is lost. And 
and the bed can't wiggle side to side, up or down, any of them. So I'm loading the vehicle the same way as loading it. So you want to ensure that the rear legs of the tow truck are contacting the ground. If they are not contacting the ground, all of the weight will not be properly distributed. It will all be sitting over the tilt pistons in the rear of the frame. Again, that's how you crack or damage a frame. So you also do not want to continually lift up with the legs. If you continually lift up with the legs, you're raising the rear suspension and you can pick the rear tires up. That's not good because now your tow truck will move. So just enough where the weight is pressed up in that area. Now we're gonna bring the bed back down. All right, so now that the bed is back down, we're going to unload the vehicle. And during, during the movement of the truck, with the car on the bed, suspension shifts and all that can happen. So just be very cautious when you go to unstrap. We know the car's in park and we know that the parking brake's on, but it can still slide down a couple inches. If the bed's very wet, it could slide down even more. So in this case, if we had just loaded this car up, and on our way there, it started raining and the entire deck is covered in water or ice or something. The, the weight of us unstrapping the last tire can jerk the car where to slide off the deck. At that point, you would want to use the winch connected to the, the car and then winch the vehicle down. But it's very dry. So we will just unstrap this. You'll see the suspension change as this is unstrapped. So as you see, the car jolted a little bit. Not much force, as the suspension did not travel, it was just set up. So we're going to move the strap out of the way. Like I said, we're only strapping this tire, but in your case, all four tires would be strapped. So you would unstrap all of them. I always leave the left front as the last one because you were not in the vehicle's way at all. If something does happen and it's sliding, you unstrap it vehicle move this way you're also close enough where if something did happen the car started sliding back very slowly I, I'm close enough to get in and prevent it from going backwards too far so at this point we're just going to restart the vehicle and drive it off the tow truck All right, so now that you guys have seen how to load and unload a vehicle that operates onto the tow truck, we will now show you how to load a vehicle that does not operate. So we're going to now pretend that this vehicle has a damaged transmission and will not go forward or backwards, and we will have to use the winch. So at this point, we will get the winch. All right, so like I said, we're now going to winch this on and pretend that it is inoperable. So at this point, we're going to put our winch in free spool by coming over here. This tow truck has a Jordan bed. Most Jordan beds are the same. We have a, um, I guess, a push-pull knob on either side. And in order to bring it to free spool, we need to pull this lever out, out and up. And that, that movement you just heard was the winch going into free spool allow us to pull the cable. So my truck, I remove the bed sides. I like to pull the cable from the side. Some people walk up the deck, but again, if the deck is slippery, wet, or something, and you start pulling a winch cable, you are going to go down onto the ground, slide off the deck, and end up over there. And that's not good. So we pull the winch from the side. The winch should not be tight, should not be hard to pull. It should come very, very freely, very easily. Yes, bring it back. So now that the winch is out, we're going to grab our V bridle. And this V bridle is called a V bridle. It's like a V. Inside out, I guess. So we're going to connect the winch hook to this and this will allow us to connect to the vehicle on both the left and right side to ensure that it winches up 
very evenly. This is locked in the hook. If your hook doesn't lock or latch properly and comes open or free on its own, it's very unsafe and you should replace that. We're going to find the most suitable place to attach, whether we use a frame hook, J hook spot, or a hook, larger J hook around a control arm or another tow point. This being a Subaru would have larger tow hooks, but they have been removed, mostly due to rust. This is New England, rust occurs, you need to account for that. You can't hook up to a rusty tow point, start winching, and next thing you know, the frame of the vehicle you're towing is being dragged up while the vehicle is still sitting in the same place. Not good. So pay attention to what you're doing as you are now responsible for this vehicle being towed and all damage that occurs during that falls on you, the driver. So what we're gonna do is attach directly to the control arms. Big rusty gun. So you'll be able to see it much better on this side. So what we're doing is taking the J-hook and putting it... Oh. Oh. So what we're doing is taking this J-hook and putting it around the end of the control arm in an area where it's not going to hit the sway bar and bend it or the tie rod and bend it or the axle and bend it. So we're going to attach this. Hold on, we're all caught up here. All right, so we're going to attach this right here at the end of the control arm and see how it's wrapped around. The other end is on the other side. It's not contacting anything. And to ensure nothing is going to hit, you can pull on this chain and simulate a winch and you'll see that the J hooks will hit nothing else. All right, here you go. All right, now we need to bring the winch out of free spool mode or it will not, it will not tighten the winch cable up. So we're gonna go reverse that lever process. And all we do is take this knob, push it in, and now the winch should operate. Anytime you contact the winch cable, you should have gloves on. I know this cable has no frays in it and we're not doing anything extensive. So I'm just gonna have my hand here because you do not want any slack on the winch cable as you're tightening it or it'll bind on itself, get caught, break, fray. But you do not want to touch it with bare hands because if there is a frayed wire, it will hurt. And you'll never do that again. Ask me how I know. So we're just gonna start the winch process. So now that there's barely any tension on that cable, we're going to get back into the vehicle and put it in neutral. So the vehicle is now in neutral. And I always roll the driver's side window down unless it's raining for easy steering wheel adjustments. Some newer trucks have a, a handheld operate uh, winch remote where you can just sit in the vehicle, winch yourself up. We don't have those luxuries here because we're working class people. So we're just going to winch the vehicle up and occasionally might have to adjust the steering wheel to put the vehicle on the bed, you know, in the middle, not too far to the left, to the right, etc. As you see, we are winching up. And as you see the passenger side, the car is going to the passenger side more. So we're gonna turn the wheel a little bit to the driver's side to bring the car this way some more. My truck decided now is an appropriate time to run a regen, so 
so sorry for the loud noise. So now that we've winched the vehicle where we want it, at this point, you would strap it down, put it in park, and then strap the rest of the tires down, bring the bed up, bring the bed down, unload, etc. So the way you get the vehicle off after winching it on, it's the exact same, but in reverse, winch it off, take your J-hooks off. You know, well, first you put the vehicle in park once it's on the ground, then release your winch, take the J-hooks off, Get your bed out of the way and then ensure the vehicle is where it needs to go. So we're now going to unload this in a time lapse to show you very quickly and then that will complete the process of loading and unloading a vehicle using the winch. So the car is still in neutral so we're just going to unload it now. You guys get to watch firsthand how that's done. Now that the vehicle is off and our bed is back up, we're going to secure the winch and the J-hooks. Rather than taking the cable and bringing it all the way up and spending that time taking the J-hooks off, we're just going to secure the whole setup to the tow truck. And we'll do that by just winching it forward. Again, taking the slack out. to go too tight, just barely any tension, you still want to be able to move it, otherwise you'll free the, the cable, damage, you know, anything. Um, at this point, now we're going to get back into the truck, and we're going to turn off the, uh, the speed control, turn off the PTO, and then bring the air suspension back up so that we can move the truck. Alright, now that we're back in the truck, ready to leave, we need to reverse how we started. First things first is turning off the high idle, bringing the truck down to an idle. You do that first. Next is turning off the PTO. PTO is off, you'll hear the change in the engine sound. Next is, as you see, we still have no air pressure. So we're going to turn the air pressure to the rear airbags back on. And you'll see the air pressure rise. Should be about 60 PSI. Every truck is going to be different depending on your airbag size. So once you see the suspension level out, the rear of the truck kick up and the bed come off of the rear tires, you're now ready to move the truck and you've just completed your first tow. Congratulations. If you have any questions, um, you know, whether, whether it's where I got the straps, what I'm using, you know, if you want. The next video we're going to do is how to unload and load a pickup truck using chains, you know, maybe chains and binders, using the winch cable as a tie down point, which you shouldn't. But in some cases, it is used to move heavier trucks or equipment, such as forklifts that you can also use tow trucks to move, and things like that. So we'll continually be posting videos on how to move different things, you know, like mini excavators, skid steers, stuff like that, stuff you see tow trucks hauling every day. You can do it too, and we'll show you how. So subscribe, and uh, that's it. Keep being a tow bro.